Hello everyone, my name is Fatih Bali and this is my presentation for our paper titled The Area Latency Symbiosis Towards Improved Serial Encryption Circuits. Let me start my presentation by giving you an example application in which the lightweight cryptography is essential. So on the left side, you, what you're seeing is an identity card which is equipped with a chip inside and on the right side there's a terminal which is um, wirelessly powering this card for the communication. And, and the eventual goal if, is to establish a tunnel between these two parties so that there's a bidirectional communication that is secure uh, from the outsiders. Uh, this is typically realized by the primitive authenticated encryption with associated data. And in particular in this paper, what we're concerned is about the efficiency or lightweightness of the implementation of such a particular scheme. Uh, when we talk about efficiency, in our paper, uh, what we refer, in our work, what we refer to is uh, first the silicon area of the final circuit, and later uh, it is the throughput and the latency metrics. And uh, it is needless to say that our effort goes in parallel to the NIST uh, lightweight cryptography, which is an ongoing standardization process. Uh, at, at, currently, it is in the final round, but at the time of writing this paper, it was uh, at the end of the second round. Uh, and typically what happens uh, through the standardization or in general in the cryptographic discipline is we, we have on the left side, as you can see, we have these design paradigms which are used by uh, the, the designers to instantiate their own schemes. In the case of mode of operation, we see a different uh, flavors of mode of operation definitions uh, which are employing a common block ciphers such as GIFT, uh, Skinny and AES. Uh, in the second rounds, in the second round, there were four, uh, three and four candidates respectively, respectively for each of these block ciphers. Whereas in the final round, you only have one candidate which is using GIFT and another one which is using Skinny. And the particular question that our work tries to deal with is, um, well, how can we make these uh, AED schemes as small as possible in the ASIC platform while also considering some of the other metrics at the same time? Uh, and Naturally, it boils down to how we can efficiently uh, build and implement these block ciphers so that we, in this paper, will particularly look at the implementation of block ciphers. And we, at this point, we should remember what this type of block ciphers look on the inside because uh, from an implementation perspective, uh, when we try to build circuits that are smaller and smaller, we are going to have to deal with a different type of operations which might be either suitable or non-suitable for the time of strategy that we're following in our implementation. And all of these block ciphers are GIFT, Skinny, and AES. What we have is a round function and key scheduling algorithms uh, that are running once every round. And inside the round function, of course, you have the addition of the key um, here, followed by the, uh, the substitution layer, followed by permutation layer, and then depending on the block cipher, uh, there is the linear matrix operation as well. As I said before, our main goal in this work is to have the smallest implementations in terms of silicon area. For example, one could first consider um, the combinatorial implementation of a given block cipher, where each of the RF and KS blocks would be um, implemented and copy-pasted in a row so that the, the final large combinatorial circuit could execute uh, the block cipher operation. But of course, this is very large because we keep repeating the same type of operations inside the same circuits. So the, the better way to do would be considering a round-based implementation where the register blocks are used to store the intermediate values that are coming out of the RF and case blocks. And uh, the round-based implementations are known to be sweet spots in terms of their performance regarding various metrics. For example, they are not necessarily very large because they use only one RF and KS blocks. Also, they have, they have better and smaller energy consumption compared to other type of architectures, as well as they have an acceptable range of latency um, in the sense that the operation or the encryption operation from the block cipher takes a small amount of time. But our interest is uh, partially theoretical here and we want to know what is the best we can do in terms of area. So we further want to optimize uh, for for the smaller silicon area 
probably at the expense of other metrics. Uh, in order to do that, one would follow the trend of further and further serialization. And in this case, for example, one could first consider a 32-bit serialization for a something like AS block cipher. Here, it means that we update only 32 bits of data every clock cycle, uh, both for the key scheduling and the run function operations. This makes the case and RF, blo RF blocks smaller because we, av we avoid repeating some of the same sub blocks uh, embedded inside the RF and KS uh, functions. We can push this idea even further and have the 8 bit serial implementations. Um, and in particular in this paper as well, we could um, go for the 1 bit serial implementations. And 1 bit serial implementations will have the smallest implementations because uh, they will naturally avoid reuse of uh, same type of gates uh, inside the case and RF. Uh, functions. And the two previous works that our results directly correlate to or build on top of are, are, is, are as follows. The first one is the, the bit sliding uh, paper from Jean et al. in CHESS 2017, where the authors provide uh, for the first time one bit serial implementations for the block ciphers AES, Skinny, and Present 80. And at the time of that paper, uh, these are the non-smallest implementations and this area gain comes from the fact that we are able to remove uh, the gates that are doing the same operation by uh, reducing the de degree to one bit and uh, in the second in the second part there's this other paper which was run uh, which was um, written by Banik et al uh, including myself um, and in this paper the authors look in particular uh, the present 80 and gift 64 block ciphers uh, because uh, they have this interesting property that their permutation layer is operating at the one bit granularity and it is hard to implement a permutation like that in a pipeline architecture uh, and they introduce a notion called uh, permutation through swaps uh, in other words uh, they define the operations that are swaps on top of the pipeline because those operations can be executed and implemented very cheaply on hardware. And then uh, there's this mathematical question of how we can execute a predefined permutation through uh, conveniently chosen swap operations. Um, and then following these two works, the footsteps of these two works, uh, the goal, uh, the starting point for us was uh, whether we can apply the same techniques from the swap and rotate, uh, namely, um, use the idea of swaps in order to, to uh, make it smaller, the, the circuit of AES skinny or, or GIFT 128, which is the more popular variant. Also, uh, can we also make other gains uh, according to various metrics, namely latency and the energy consumption? And the motivation was again uh, to explore uh, what I call the continuous execution paradigm. It's a different type of uh, implementation strategy for uh, serial architectures. And then uh, our idea was to get a closure on the one bit implementation domain. And uh, just to summarize um, uh, our contribution beforehand, uh, we will provide, we do provide one bit and four and eight bit implementations of AS128, uh, Skinny128 variants, and then GIF128, and then other variant of GIFT uh, that, use, that assumes a different input and output ordering um, in, uh, for its bits. And then what we provide is a continuously executing pipelines where there's a lot of stopping or freezing type of operations, which means that we don't have to resort to using something like a clock gating, or we don't need to use things like enable flip flops, which are larger than the default flip flops. Um, also, we achieve a smaller latency per round as well. And the source code is available as a chess artifact. Uh, and with that said, let me come back to the implementation by Jean et al. Uh, from 2017. Uh, in this one-bit serial pipeline implementation of AS, uh, in, in particular in this slide, what you're looking is what you're looking at is uh, 128 uh, flip-flops organized in the form of a pipeline, so that any bit that comes uh, into the pipeline, which is from here, uh, moves by by being shifted towards the left and then going upward direction. Uh, it, it roughly spends uh, 168 clock cycles until a full round is completed over 128 bits. 
So that means that this pipeline is uh, surrounded by this additional circuitry, uh, which is performing the add round key, uh, the, the, the sub byte operations, uh, shift rows and mixed column operations. And, and particularly uh, our attention is on here uh, on the blue uh, arrows that are denoting the, the ports for the shift row operation. As you can see here, these blue arrows are um, organized in a fashion that the, the shift row operation can be performed over uh, multiple clock cycles. And later, uh, when this uh, shift rows operation is completed over the 128 bits of data, then it is followed by the mixed column operation. So this figure was taken directly by uh, the paper from Jeanne et al. And the main novel contribution here is, uh, is, is how we can execute the mixed column operation by reading the eight bits of input and then feeding back the four, four bits into the pipeline. Okay, but we felt that uh, there were a couple of missing things here and I'm going to summarize them uh, in the coming slides. Uh, so just to summarize again, um, what could be improved here uh, when we look at this implementation is um, the first that the full round can be executed much faster and in this particular uh, figure that you have seen before, um, the authors require, the designers require 168 clock cycles per round. That is because 128 clock cycles are spent for the addition of the round key, 8 clock cycles are used for the shift rows operation and 32 clock cycles are uh, used for the mixed column operation. And that is because um, these two, these three uh, group of operations are performed in a citric sequence. Um, and moreover, uh, some kind of small rotation ports are um, enabled on the pipeline, which means an extra gate added on top of the pipeline so that the, 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 the implementation can avoid freezing some of the content uh, stored in the register. Uh, furthermore, uh, the permutation could have been done with a scan flip-flop, which is the, sec the contribution from the other paper, as I said uh, before. Uh, so that there are a couple of improvements that are uh, awaiting us on the data pipeline. Uh, and on the key pipeline, the problem, the main problem, and the main drawback of this design is that the pipeline must be frozen for 40 clock cycles because uh, the pipeline ends up, it is uh, finishes, it is um, key scheduling execution after 128 clock cycles, which means that there is a surplus of 40 clock cycles. And now coming back to the second paper, which was inspiring for us, uh, this paper from Banik et al. looked at the implementation of present and AD, present AD and gives 64 block ciphers, where the blocks are 64 bit. And here, uh, the main uh, idea was to use the swap operation so here the swap operation is uh, a pair of flip-flops that are interconnected with each other in a way that uh, if this swap operation is activated in a clock cycle, then the, the bit stored within will be exchanged. If this is disabled, then the pipeline is going to move uh, in, in the regular fashion. Uh, by using the swap operations, the designers show that you can execute the permutation layers, which look uh, rather arbitrary, uh, by carefully choosing the swap locations. This comes, uh, this means that the implementation would be much smaller if you use the swap operations. Furthermore, it can actually execute the permutation faster because the permutation operations or the swap operations that are being used can be run in parallel with the other type of operations, the namely add round key and the sub byte operations. And the main challenges in such a design, again, is to first express the permutation in terms of conveniently chosen swap locations. And secondly, uh, the, the, the secondary challenge is to interleave the operations uh, so that there's not a data dependency between these uh, operations running at the same time. And by doing so, the authors were able to complete um, the, the full round update in 64 clock cycles um, without using extra additional uh, clock cycles for um, permutation type of operations. And this is how the pipelines actually look like eventually, where you have this, uh, the pair of colors which are denoting the specific locations of swaps, which are hard coded in the circuit, of course. Um, but the, the position of swaps are carefully chosen, like I said before, and it depends very much on the definition of the permutation from the block cipher. So it is, so it does not naturally imply that we can directly uh, do the same thing for AES skinny or other type of block ciphers. It means that we have to spend extra efforts to also come up with those uh, convenient swap sequences. 
And to come to our contribution in this paper, let me use the one bit serial AES implementation as an example. Um, in this implementation, uh, which looks quite similar to what we have seen with the Jean et al's implementation, again, we have a pipeline that consists of 128 flip flops. And um, the main difference, uh, the first main difference is how we actually ex execute the shift rows operation. So the shift rows operation in the Jean et al's implementation was done in a, fa in a lateral fashion by connecting these 32 flip flops at a time for each of the rows. Whereas in our case, we only use uh, three conveniently placed swap locations in our circuit. So the first main challenge that we have resolved was the expression of the shift rows operation in terms of swaps. And secondly, uh, and the harder challenge was to accommodate all of these operations in a way that everything can be done in exactly 128 clock cycles. Uh, so that means that if you take a single bit and imagine the journey this single particular bit is going through, it is first going to be performed uh, an addition, the, the round key addition is going to be performed on top of this bit at the entrance of the pipeline, which is not shown in this uh, slide. And then it is going to be fed into the pipeline. And when the convenient position of this bit is uh, reached, then the SBOX operations will be performed and the, the, the result will be loaded. And then later, this bit will go through the, the particular ports of the swap gates. And if the swap uh, needs to relocate this bit to its particular new location, the correct location implied by the shift rules operation, it is going to arrive through this uh, swap gates. And then later, mixed columns operations will be performed. But what is really different, and I think novel in this particular uh, implementation that we have, is that while this bit is going through its own journey, possibly through the mixed column gates there could be other bits from the next round which is being performed with the uh, which is just being updated by the s box which means that every bit is basically treated separately and every bit that goes into the pipeline uh, now will exit the pipeline in uh, 128 clock cycles so that means that we can completely avoid the freezing idea we can avoid things like clock gating and then we can streamline uh, all of the operations so that becomes that becomes the major challenge that we resolve in this in this paper, because if you compare it with the previous work of implementation of present and gift the the paper that introduced the ideas of swaps, there they had to accommodate only three layers of operation because there was not a mixed columns operation. Whereas in this particular case, case you have four layers which has to continuously um, update the bits that are uh, coming in and then going out of the pipeline. And uh, furthermore, uh, this implementation strategy has been realized on top of the skinny uh, on the GIFT 128-bit variants as well, so that uh, we also provide implementation for, for, for these two popular block ciphers among NIST LWC. And then we do not conclude our work only at 1-bit serial implementations, and then we port our ideas to 8-bit serial implementations as well. So the 8-bit serial implementations could be useful if the designer is willing to spend a bit more cost in terms of silicon area to gain a lot of throughput uh, and minimize the latency even further. Uh, in the case of AES, we provide the very first implementation, 8-bit serial implementation that can execute a single run in exactly 16 clock cycles. But this comes with a, uh, a drawback that is we have to use a two S boxes because the key are scheduled and the run function operations both of them use SBOX. It means that the single SBOX cannot be used to uh, maintain this uh, minimal latency of 16 clock cycles per round. And, this, and the second uh, thing about this AS implementation is that it is uh, slightly larger. So this is a consequence of using two SBOXs uh, because the AS SBOX is uh, particularly large. And then later, um, again, we resolve the issues about the interleaving of the operations. In terms of skinny, we do not have any major uh, conflicts when we upgrade our implementation 8-bit uh, serialization. It just requires uh, duplicating one gate by a factor of 8 to realize the swap gate. In the case of 4-bit serial, I uh, give 128, it was implemented in the 4-bit serial fashion only because the SBOX was 4-bit. Uh, um, we resort back to using the fully maxed pipeline. But of course, the main message here is that we are able to maintain 132 clock cycles for executing the full round. And you might wonder how does it really fare in comparison 
to state-of-the-art implementations. Uh, here you can find a direct comparison. So in the case of AES, uh, the, si the size of the, uh, the circuit is rather uh, similar. Uh, it is slightly smaller um, in the NAND gate 45 nanometer library, but the difference is uh, quite small that uh, we would consider them to be equal. Um, but in the case of latency, you can actually see the main gain here uh, from 168 clock cycles to 128 clock cycles per round. And this is the minimum that you can achieve uh, for one bit serialization anyway. And this, of course, directly translates into the energy consumption as well, because now we can avoid this extra clock cycles as well as this uh, unnecessary rotations, uh, which are just trying to keep the pipeline synchronized. Uh, the same uh, type of results apply for the skinny as well. You see a uh, roughly same size in terms of uh, comparison with the previous work from the work of Jean et al. And the, here again, you see the same gain in terms of latency uh, as well as the energy consumption as well. In the case of GIFT, it's slightly different. Uh, for example, in one particular case, we do not end up having the, um, the smaller uh, power consumption. That is only because now, the, when we try to make it faster, when we try to make everything be completed in 120 clock cycles, now we have to make a major improvements on the key pipeline. And the key pipeline becomes a major problem if we want to run it faster. And similarly, uh, we can give a comparison with the state-of-the-art 8-bit implementations. Um, unfortunately, for some of the comparisons, we do not have the implementations in the same common library so that uh, we cannot provide a direct comparison, especially in the case of AES, because um, uh, if, for example, if you take the numbers as they are, it looks as if our implementation is slightly smaller than the one uh, done in the previous work. Um, but uh, the reality of the case is that uh, here the STM uh, typically provides a smaller gate equivalent numbers. And in our implementation of AS, it is probably slightly larger um, because although we make some gains in terms of other parts of the circuit, we use two boxes, two S boxes at, in the end. Uh, in the case of latency, you can see the gain uh, as clear uh, as possible because um, latency does not depend on the technology library anywhere. It's a feature of the implementation. Uh, again, for the case of energy, it is better not to try to do comparison um, because they are different libraries. In the case of Skinny, uh, we can actually provide some comparison, uh, but not with the work from Jean et al. Um, for the lack of the same library again. Um, again, uh, it is clear to see that the latency wise, our implementations provide the smallest, the minimum number of clock cycles. And it typically gives less energy power consumption compared with the previous work of Banik et al. here. And in the case of GIFT, again, we can make some gains in the latency and the energy consumption as well. But it must be noted that the implementation that we did here is a different variant of GIFT, which, it, which assumes a different input and the output ordering uh, for convenience, um, especially in the software implementation, it becomes very convenient and cheap to implement this variant. At the beginning of my presentation, I talked about design paradigms and the mode of operation as a one particular design paradigm, which provided a lot of schemes in the NIST LWC, especially in the second round. Um, therefore, it is natural to assume and it is natural to say that the block ciphers are not uh, end user primitives. So therefore, we need to also consider the mode of operations. And here, just to show you that the mode of operation circuitry can also be um, done quite cheaply, and it is possible to execute these operations in, in one bit or four bit or eight bit serialization. We provide implementations uh, for the authenticated encryption primitives as well. And in particular, I think the Sunday gift is very impressive um, because it is quite small and it is a full uh, end user friendly primitive here. So we provided here in this paper um, one, part, one, one candidate implementation that covers at least uh, one for each of the block ciphers that we have provided. In that case, let me conclude uh, my presentation and summarize uh, the contributions from this work. Again, um, we provide open source implementations that are accessible through the chess artifact for one bit, uh, four or eight bit serial implementations for AS128 a skinny 128 block variants, uh, three of them, 
uh, we provide implementation for gift 128 and then the other variant of gift which assumes a different input and output ordering um, and then the main uh, novel technique that we introduce is the one where the pipelines are continuously active and uh, the operations are streamlined in a fashion that while uh, some of the bits are going through things like add run key or sub bytes there are other bits that are being um, um, executing through the mixed columns or the shift ropes operations and this naturally implies uh, or uh, the outcome of such an approach is that we can achieve uh, the minimum latency that is possible from this level of serialization from given block ciphers and then uh, as a, on top of this the implementations that we provide always respect to standard ordering so one of the very convenient uh, thing that comes along with the swap technique is that we can uh, drag the follow of the standard ordering and the swaps are very useful to handle the the movement of the bits uh, while they go, go through the pipeline uh, with that i thank you for your time and attention